I have two sons, Benjamin and Nathan. Ben is nine and Nathan is seven. Both of them have severe hemophilia, factor eight deficiency, and are treated every other day. Ben loves basketball, loves any sport. Nathan is a character through and through. He too loves basketball and sports, but really seems to find his stride when he's in a conversation with a group or with people. We had no history in the family prior to them being born. So when they were diagnosed, it's just like sort of the world just comes crashing down on you and you don't even really understand sort of what's going on around you. So it took a long time for us to understand what that meant and learn what hemophilia was, let alone what that was gonna mean to us as a family. From an early age, their life has been different than their cousins and their peers and those around them because for two reasons. One is they have this, this treatment regimen where they have to get factor and they're sort of poked with a needle every other day. And the other one is that as parents, we are sort of hypersensitive to risk. Over time, we've become more amenable to understanding what the risk is and how we manage the risk. They sit there every other day and have the poise and the courage to get poked by a needle every other day. Not something that any kid would want to do. They always have factor the day that they play basketball. Um, just to reduce some of the risk associated with it, because it can get rough. So that's one of the key things they do to prepare. My hope for them is that they don't see themselves as having limitations. They just see themselves as having choices that are well-informed and they understand the risks going in. Early on, Benjamin had some strange bruises that would just show up um, on one of his hands. He had really bad bruising on one hand. It was really swollen. And so we'd taken him to a doctor and they just thought that he'd jammed his hand in something, and then a month or so later, it happened again. Um, and we wound up getting referred to a heads-up pediatric. A pediatric who really just was on the ball and intuitively understood that this was probably something more than just weird bruising. And as a parent, when you have a kid and you have no history and you have this strange bruising show up, you're really concerned that people are gonna think that you're abusing your child. Understanding and coping with the diagnosis for us was quite difficult. It is a hard, hard diagnosis to, a, to, to understand and to live with, um, particularly early on. The infusions are part of our life. You become accustomed to it. It's never something you want to do. I never get up in the morning and think to myself, man, I'd sure like to poke my kids with the needle today. But every day I get up and we have to do the infusions and say, today we're gonna do this because this is what we need to do so that you can do what you need to do, which is go and be a kid. When Ben developed an inhibitor, he was around two years old, maybe almost three, the treatment team encouraged us to look at a different way of introducing factor to Nathan. They were really concerned at the time that Nathan would develop an inhibitor as well. Typically, if one sibling has a, an inhibitor, then there's a higher odds that the other one would get it. The treatment team at SickKids encouraged us to look at introducing factor early on on a regular basis so that his body would think that this is normal and we would start to reject it and develop an inhibitor. And that was an important thing for us because having just gone through that process, sort of immune tolerizing Ben and having to get rid of the inhibitor and having to understand what that meant, we didn't want to have to go through that with Nathan as well because it is quite an ordeal. So fortunately for us, that approach of regular doses of factor with Nathan early on in life worked and he did not develop an inhibitor. With Nathan early on having to watch what we were going through with Benjamin, he was surrounded by really intense situations, which I think in some ways led him to become you know, much more light, much more funny, you know, has an ability to sort of break tension and break a mood. And that's one of the great things he brings to the family. When we were growing up, we always, you know, the serenity prayer was up in our parents' kitchen. And it's always stuck in my head as a good one to apply to, to hemophilia. So God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And that's an important thing for me to remember when we're treating hemophilia, or living with hemophilia, or living with the bleeding disorder, is that there's certain things I can change, there are certain things I can't. And recognizing what I can't change and what I can change is as important as actually making the change. being down at Sick Kids Hospital on a regular basis and seeing what it's like to be in that environment for other families. You realize you're not alone. You realize while you have it bad, there are people that potentially have it worse. And that doesn't make hemophilia any easier to live with. But at the same time, you understand that we're able to treat this. There's some things that you can't treat. 
If I was to share one thing with other parents that are newly diagnosed with hemophilia, it's that it will be okay. Treatment of hemophilia in the 21st century is much different than it was in the 20th century. Work with the hemophilia treatment team, it's a huge shock, but with time, it will be okay. Our goal for our kids is that they are able to own hemophilia rather than have hemophilia own them. Self-care is a big part of them taking control of their lives and taking control of hemophilia so that it becomes not who they are, but part of who they are. But I can't imagine living without hemophilia. And in a lot of ways, I wish my kids didn't have it. You know, almost every day I wish they didn't have hemophilia, and I know they do, they do as well. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I hope that it's going to make them stronger people in the long term. It has certainly made me a stronger father and a better father for it. So I'm optimistic that having this diagnosis and living with hemophilia will make them better people.